how to adjust sag and strain using load bias. So in this video we're going to show how to use load bias and load bias just is a way of actually uh, creating um, an area where there would be high sag. We can go in and we can use a load bias to basically uh, remove the sag from a part and I'll show you on our 3D model right here in the back is a piece that I'm going to flatten. I'm just going to hide the rest of the model here. And we'll bring this into view. And um, because of the curvature of this piece, we'll show you when we flatten it. And we'll just go to our pattern view. And we'll turn off our other three views and we'll go into top. And you can see here's the high levels of strain and stress. We'll uh, flatten it. We'll spring it. And we have some sag up here on the top. So if we want to get rid of the sag, what we can do is we can simply use our load bias. And how we do that is we'll go in and we'll add a grain line at the top here. And it's going to have global target strain. And what we're going to do is we're going to use 1% up here. And just hit OK. And then when we respring the piece, hit OK here. What it'll do is you can see it's actually gotten rid of quite a bit of that uh, that sag. Now I can go back and I can change the uh, load bias to 2%. So same thing, basically just go, we have a grain line here. And we'll just uh, do our target strain and do it at 2%. And same thing, we hit our spring. So we're going to respring it. And there you can see it's basically taken out all of our our uh, sag in the part. So I've gone from uh, from a from a 1% didn't actually do enough. So I've added uh, 2%, and you can see it's taken care of all of the sag that was on that top part. In this video, we showed how to adjust sag and strain using load bias. For more information. Go to exactflat.com slash monarch.